Hey guys, what's up? It's Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews, and I'm here with a with my uh, Black Friday haul. It's um, going to be quite the video. I got a couple other things here that are Christmas presents from my siblings. Um, so yeah. Um, oh yeah, and in case you didn't notice, I shaved my fucking head. I couldn't tell you why I did it. I just fucking did it. Thankfully, I wear hats. I look like... With this fucking light-colored hat and my... Um... Like, peach mummy t-shirt. I, I probably look like a real fucking boomer right now. But you know what? I don't really care. Um... Let me... Let me just get everything out onto the table, and then we can uh, really get this fucking thing started. Um, I guess I'll start with my order for vinegar syndrome, just because it's all in this box right here. Um, so yeah, vinegar syndrome, pretty good sale, pretty good stuff. Um, one of the first things I got is the, their surprise title um, for this Black Friday, uh, for the Black Friday sale, which is Silent Madness, which is a slasher film from the, like, early to mid-80s that I'd never seen before. Always kind of been meaning to see uh, Silent Madness, just because it, it has always looked really interesting, and it's supposedly in 3D. Um... <clears throat> You know, so it's always been on my list for that. And when I heard that they were putting it out on, on Blu-ray, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to get it. And it even comes with some really nice, like, I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but, you know, they say Silent Madness, and they got the poster artwork. Again, a little hard to see, but the poster artwork um, on each different earpiece. Um... And, uh, yeah, it's Silent Madness in 3D. I watched it. I didn't watch it in 3D because I didn't want to be too distracted. Um, but, yeah, it's a pretty entertaining little low-budget forgotten slasher film. Definitely not amazing. Um, kind of low on the gore. But, uh, I do not regret spending my time watching it. Um, it was a really fun time, and, uh, this is a very, very good release. Um, and this has never been available on disc before, so that's also a very, very cool thing. Um, I got one of their titles they were doing a slipcover for for Agfa. Sometimes Aunt Martha does dreadful things. I've never seen this, always heard about this title. Um, always heard about this title, never actually, you know, watched it, um, before. But it... But it always looked super interesting, sounded super interesting, um, and it's supposedly like some kind of like you know mix of uh, like '70s melodrama with like exploitation, uh, dropping somewhere between Pink Flamingos, Blood Feast, and an episode of The Brady Bunch on Acid. Sometimes Aunt Martha does dreadful things is a historic psychodrama that could only have originated in an alternate dimension known as Florida. After robbing a bank in Baltimore, the cro a cross-dressing Paul, aka Aunt Martha, and his partner Stanley hide out in a Florida town, but it is only a matter of time before Paul's paranoia forces him to embark on a demented killing spree. Agfa is thrilled to present one of the most unforgettable exploitation movies of all time, and an overlooked chapter of early queer cinema preserved from the only 35 millimeter theatrical print in existence. Huh. Oh, and there's um, extras on here include some trailers as well as a bonus movie called The Drag Queen's Ball and some short films, uh, The Gay in, th Gay in 3 and Caught in the Can. Uh, so this is 
yeah, I think this is just a straight Agfa release, but um, I'm pretty sure this is... I'm pretty sure the um, specials are from... It says they're from something weird. So, either way, this is like a uh, Region ABC, I think, Blu-ray, which is cool. Um, yeah, sometimes Aunt Martha does dreadful things. I'm not going to read the backs of all of these. I just wanted to read the back of that one because I didn't know the plot. Uh, next is The Severed Arm. This was... Um, one of their surprise titles for their Halfway to Black Friday sale, um, which was a very good sale. I didn't grab this title then because it was full price, and I've seen this movie before. Keep, keep in mind, I've seen the cut version that's like the public domain release version, um, and I found it to be very boring. So I was very worried when I saw that this was one of their surprise releases. However, when it was on sale for 17 bucks, I kind of grabbed it because I figured, A, this is, uh, as far as I know, kind of a limited release, and, um, you know, it'll be worth having if this turns out to be, like, a quite the little gem and I just maybe misunderstood the film, um, or I'm misremembering it, or, you know, this could make, just give earn me a quick buck and I could resell it once it goes out of print. Either way, The Severed Arm. Uh, yeah, I should mention. This movie is about a guy who, like, has his arm severed when him and a bunch of friends are, are trapped in a cave and they're about to starve to death. And as soon as they sever his arm and start to eat it, they're rescued. And he's driven insane after the fact. And then embarks on a killing spree, cutting off the arms of the people he was trapped in the cave with in this proto-slasher type of movie. Uh, it's a, definitely a really interesting concept, and I, I, I want to give it another shot as well. Uh, Deadly Games, aka Dog Coat Santa Claus. Really happy this has a Blu-ray release. Not only a Blu-ray release, but a motherfucking 4K release. Um, Dog Coat Santa Claus. I actually don't have much to say about this one. This one I reviewed as the Christmas special on my channel last year. So... Uh, yeah, I actually don't have too much to say about this. I don't know why I set it up. Next is Killing Birds, a.k.a. Zombie 5. Killing Birds. This is, um... An interesting one. Uh, it's a Italian zombie film that ha surprisingly doesn't really have much to do with murderous birds... Uh, but it's about a group of students who go bird watching and then encounter zombies. Uh, it's kind of weird, kind of has an interesting semi supernatural, not so supernatural, but semi surreal kind of vibe going on. One of my favorite things about it is the fact that every time a zombie shows up, the zombie, the zombie is complete with flashing, like, lights and, like, flashing fucking strobe lights behind it and billowing fog. Like, once a zombie enters a doorframe, that doorframe is f fucking pouring out fog, like, fucking mad. And that's kind of the beauty of this movie. Uh, I enjoyed it when I last saw it, which was not too long ago in, like, October, um, when I watched it for the first time. But, uh, yeah, Zombie 5, Killing Birds. I should also mention, this movie's from 1987. Keep in mind, I'm pretty sure Zombie 3 came out in 1988, and Zombie 4, After Death, came out in 1989. That's how fucked the continuity of this series is. Next is Grave Robbers. This is the first of Vinegar Syndrome's releases of uh, these Mexican directors' uh, horror output from the 80s. Um... Grave Robbers. Have not seen this before. Um, interested in seeing it. It's supposedly basically the, a Mexican take on the traditional American slasher film. The killer is very big, daunting. The kills are apparently very graphic. Um, and it's basically just about, I think, like, a, uh, the leader of a satanic cult um, who, yeah, he comes back from the dead with an axe, and he fucking starts killing people who, teenagers who, like, rob his tomb. Um, that's, that's, that's about all I got for 
Grave Robbers. Uh, looking forward to checking this one out. Another blind buy. I, I, I did a lot of blind buys this year. Um, next is The Caller, starring Malcolm McDowell. I do love me some McDowell. Uh, don't know much about this one, just that it is a supposedly a science fiction-y, home invasion-y type of movie. Um, with Malcolm McDowell, so, you know, again, you can't go wrong there. Uh, apparently, it's got a really nice atmosphere, and there's, like, a crazy twist to it. Um, and I do enjoy a good, crazy, super bizarre twist to an 80s, like, horror title. So, definitely excited to finally check this one out. And that's uh, actually all I have to say about it. I have more... I think I might have more to say about this pile than I do this box. Um, we got Pandemonium, which is a slasher parody film from the uh, early 80s, uh, directed by Alfred Stoll, who directed Alice Sweet Alice. Um, this one actually reminds me quite a bit of another film that um, Vinegar Syndrome put out, Wacko, which is, I think, like a late 80s. No, this is also early 80s. 1981 um, slasher comedy, slasher comedy, slasher parody type of movie. Uh, Wacko was really fun, so I'm hoping that Pandemonium will be just as enjoyable. Um considering it's from the director of uh, Alice Sweet Alice, and I do like Alice Sweet Alice quite a bit. The last title that um, I bought from Vinegar Syndrome is Orgy of the Dead, which I know this movie is like absolute trash, garbage, um, just completely useless. However, I kind of want to watch it because it sound because it's so so such like a garbage film apparently, and also because it's apparently just the various scenes of like burlesque dances that are horror themed, and I feel like I could definitely get behind that, um, you know, uh, as a movie that could definitely be some interesting background noise if anything. Uh, the other thing I have in this box, which isn't a uh, Vinegar Syndrome title, but this was a gift from my friend, friend Tristan. It is a Godzilla Blu-ray double feature of Godzilla vs. Desodroya and uh, Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Uh, don't have much to say about these two. I've seen these two before, but it, it's been well over ten years since I've seen them. Uh, last time I saw them, Blockbuster was still around and doing very good business. That should tell you how long ago it has been. Uh, but either way, a gift from my friend Kristen. And it's just going to go in the box. The box is going to go on the floor. And then I'm going to grab this pile, separate... Um, separate the Severin titles from the uh, various gifts, and yeah, we're just going to dive right into it. So Severin was doing a um, closeout discount sale on some of their DVDs for $3 a piece. I could not say no to this, so I grabbed five titles, five DVDs. Um, two of them are films I've seen before. And the other three are films that I have no, I have, I have vague interest in, and um, like the stick, the fucking sticky stuff stays on these DVDs. Like I swear. Um, two of two of them I've seen. Uh, three of them I have not. The three I haven't seen are Feed the Light, which is uh, a Intervision release. This is also on Blu-ray. Um, but Feed the Light, I know nothing about. Uh, I know it's like based on a story by H.P. Lovecraft. That's about it. I know it's shot in black and white. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Feed the Light. 
Another one I got, which was also three dollars, is Sinfona Erotica. This is a like previously lost sleazy um, Marquis de Sade adaptation directed by Jess Franco, um, who is you know quite the infamous uh, uh, artur of kind of trash cinema. Uh, let me read some of this. Um, When an unstable noblewoman returns to her lavish estate, she will find herself, along with her libertine husband, his male lover, and a young nun with a craving for violation, trapped in a web of unholy hungers and decadent perversions. Uh, this definitely sounds like... Um, this definitely sounds like something Jess Franco would, would make. Um... And I know they released this the same time they did the release of his film, uh, The Saddest of Notre Dame, which uh, is an interesting one. Um, so I figured for $3, you can't go wrong. Uh, another Intervision title is Queen of Blood, which is a sequel to... Um, to a film by Chris Alexander, who is the editor-in-chief of Fangoria magazine. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a spiritual sequel to his debut film, Blood of Arena, which Blood of Arena is a bonus feature uh, on this DVD, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, it's apparently kind of a weird, surreal vampire movie. It, you know, it says um, right on the front here. Macabre and effectively creepy. It feels like stuff ripped from a nightmare, which definitely sounds like something I could get into. The one DVD I got that uh, I've seen before is Bag Boy, Lover Boy, which this is quite the film. Uh, it's a very entertaining, gross, kind of disturbing, um, sort of like, I guess, sexploitation film, uh, essentially about this guy who works at a hot dog stand, and when one of his customers is, like, intrigued by his thick accent and really fucked up looking face, uh, he offers him a job as a model, um, and, but this guy, uh, I think his name is Albert, he wants to be a photographer, so, through unintentionally teaching Albert the ways that he runs his photography business, Albert tries to start his own photography business using the photographer's equipment and uh, studio. And this results in some, some very weird and sexual deviancy. Uh, quite the film, uh, not for everybody. Uh, most definitely not for everybody. But, you know, not I'm not going to say no to this for $3 um, at all. Never. Now, the final DVD I bought, which I bought because it was $3, and I hate this film, but as somebody who adores bad movies, I guess I kind of have to own it. So I figured, okay, I'll buy the $3 DVD of it, throw it on my shelf, and never think about it again. However, when I got my package, I realized... This is a Blu-ray, but I was still charged for a DVD, meaning that they must have been out of the DVDs, so they just sent me the Blu-ray instead, which I'm not going to complain about. Um, the final one that I got for $3 is Birdemic Shock and Terror. I now own this fucking piece of shit on Blu-ray, and I hate myself for it. So, uh... Burt Dimmick is one of those movies that's, like, made by somebody with no skill at all. And as a result, it's, like, really, really awful. But the ways that it's awful are only funny for a very short amount of time before the film just becomes boring. And that's... and or annoying. And that's pretty much everything I have to say about Burt Dimmick. Um... It's a boring and annoying.
getting on to the rest of the stuff from Severin. I guess I'll just start from the top. We got the Horrors of Spider Island, which is, this is the second time they've released a, you know, uncut Blu-ray restoration uh, of a film that is primarily known for being an awful movie that's in the public domain. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with this slip cover, so I'm just going to sit it right there. Uh, so, I'm not the biggest fan of this movie. I think this movie's pretty pretty awful. Uh, not super interesting. Uh, however, like, very similar to the situation with um, Vampire in a Girl's Dormitory, which Severin also put out, where it's a film that I, like, know of... I know it's supposed to be bad, and I bought it because I was like, oh yeah, that trailer makes it look pretty interesting. And I already know how, if you've seen my uh, my Black Friday update from last year, you'll know that I bought the Blu-ray of Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory for nearly $30, watched it, and found it to be extremely meddling and just not very interesting. Um... And that was a major, major miss. Uh, hopefully, I'm hoping that I revisit this film in its uncut form, this film in its uncut form, and maybe I will find something that I really appreciate. Uh, I, that's what I'm really hoping for. Thankfully, for this this time, I waited for this film to go on, to, on sale before sp buying it. So I only spent like 17 bucks on this, and I am completely okay with that. Um, their one Black Friday, one of their Black Friday titles is this one, which is The Castle of Creeping Flesh, um, which I really like that slipcover, but I also really like this, uh, cover art for it, The Castle of Creeping Flesh. Um, so yeah, don't know what this movie's about, um, I know it's supposedly, like, uh, I think a German film? Uh, probably not. I'm about to find out. Yeah, this is a German film um, from the 60s that is apparently a really like sleazy uh, kind of gothic horror film. Um, you know, and I figured I could go for some gothic horror sleaze, some some kind of Andy Milligan type shit. Um, hopefully this will be better than the average Andy Milligan film, and I say that as somebody who loves Milligan. But uh, yeah, Castle of the Creeping Flesh. Gonna have to watch it. Uh, we also got here Tales of the Uncanny, which I literally... Like, I'm not much of a documentary guy. I don't like to buy documentaries on Blu-ray or DVD or any format. Most of the time, my relationship with a documentary is I will watch it, retain the information from it, and never watch it again because I don't feel the need to revisit it because I've already retained the information. Um, however, when I heard that this release was going to include two, uh, like, you know, thought lost... Um, two, like, rarely seen, thought to be lost, uh, fucking anthology films, those being Eerie Tales from 1919 and Unusual Tales from 1949, I was immediately on board for that. I was immediately like, okay, two bonus films, and these are like, you know, kind of rarely seen supposedly at one point lost movies, I can completely get behind that. Included with this, uh, with, I kept, I put the sticker on the case, is because it, I bought it on Black Friday, um, included is the Black Friday exclusive bonus disc of the, um, I think 19, yeah, 1965 horror anthology, Master of Horror which is apparently an Edgar Allan Poe anthology. Um, and this is another film that has thought to have been lost for years. Not a lot of people have seen it. Fairly obscure. 
and uh, I figured, you know what, I'll grab it, because the last couple of documentaries from Severin have been pretty interesting stuff, and this includes three extra movies. Why would I say no to that? I also got Satan's Slaves, or Satan's Slave, um, which this is literally just a, it's, this is a, a Indonesian horror film from the 80s, that um, I would actually say is, uh, and I, th I and many other people would say, is basically just an Indonesian remake of Phantasm. Uh, that's what a lot of people know it as. Uh, and yeah, it's very similar to Phantasm. And I would definitely say that comparison is, is, is an apt one. However, this movie is still kind of sort of bananas in its own way. It's it's definitely unique in its own way. It's definitely trying to do its own thing, even if the plot is kind of reminiscent of Phantasm. This film was remade um, by director Junko Anwar, um, who directed a film that was released this year called Empedagor, which is really great. And he directed the remake of this called Satan's Slave, uh, or no, I, I could have sworn it was called Satan's Slaves. Um, I could have sworn that the director was, um, I could have sworn that, 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 that the remake was called Satan's Slaves. Either way, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, either way, yeah, Junko Anwar, he directed the remake of this, which the remake of this sucks ass, don't even bother, it's literally the American equivalent of a Blumhouse film, if you want to see fucking The Gallows, but it's Indonesian, maybe that's a bit too hard, extreme of an example, but still, if you want to see Insidious, but it's in, in, but it's an Indonesian film, that's Satan's Slaves. Um, however, this does include some uh, short films by Joko Anwar um, on the Blu-ray as bonus features. Um, so that's definitely uh, also a plus. I can completely dig that. Satan's Slave was a pretty cool movie. Next we got The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. This is a film uh, directed by Sergio Martino, uh, who directed... All the Colors of the Dark, which I bought during the last uh, Severin sale and watched it, and I thought it was a pretty interesting little movie. Not amazing, but definitely a super interesting uh, giallo film. Definitely a one-of-a-kind giallo film. Very dreamy, very atmospheric, uh, violent, psychosexual. Um, this film I saw before... Uh, all the Colors of the Dark, and I found this to be, like, really, really great. Like, this is, like, almost a perfect giallo film, in my opinion. I found this to be a lot more interesting, a lot more mesmerizing, um, definitely not as visually beautiful as All the Colors of the Dark, but this is still an extremely well-produced giallo, uh, and I think, at least by the standards of giallo fans, this film's kind of well-known, but... I would just, I'd just like to say, I really like this film. Really, really great, Jalo. Um, very good stuff. This also includes the soundtrack, which is cool. Uh, we got Lucio Fulci's Demonia. Uh, never seen this one. This is his non-sploitation uh, film from the early 90s. Uh, and I like non-sploitation films. You know, uh, Santanico Pandemonium is really good. Uh, the Other Hell is really good. Dark Waters is really good. Um, what else? What else is there? Oh, The Devils. How could I forget about The Devils or uh, Alicarda? Uh, I haven't seen this one yet. Looking forward to it. Um, it sounds like a great time, and I've always heard this one's really great. Happy that it finally has a Blu-ray release in the U.S. Cruel Jaws. I uh, haven't seen this one yet. But it's a Jaws ripoff from Bruno Mattei. Uh, what else can I say? This, If those two things don't immediately get you interested 
then who are you and what are you doing here? Uh, yeah, Cruel Jaws. Oh yeah, Patrick still lives for the first time um, on Blu-ray, I'm pretty sure, or at least uh, in the U.S. I know this is the first time that the uncut version has been available in um, in 2K. Either way, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, Patrick still lives. I covered this one on my channel a few years back. Um, this is a unofficial sequel for some reason to the somewhat forgotten, like underrated, I guess, Osploitation horror film Patrick. Um, and this is a sequel that is like sleazy and gory and just really wild. Like, really, really fucking out there. Especially for a sequel to a film that, as far as I remember, the first Patrick is like a slow paced, kind of atmospheric, uh, you know, sort of film. It isn't really, uh, doesn't really have a lot in the ways of gore, uh, or violence, or sleaze. Um, but it's great that this exists, and it's great that this is on Blu-ray. Happy, more than happy, to have to own this, uh, on Blu-ray, and put this on my shelf right next to Patrick, uh, which Severn also put out on Blu-ray. The last Severn title I bought is The Black Cat, which... This has been a movie I've been interested in seeing for quite a while. I almost regret buying this one immediately because I bought it and then I watched the director Luigi Cazzi's film Paganini Horror, which I didn't buy during the sale. I couldn't tell you why I didn't buy it during the sale, but I watched Paganini Horror after buying this from the sale and I was really, really really put down by Paganini Horror, like, it wasn't as interesting as I was hoping it would be, um, and I had heard that it was a pretty wild little flick, uh, so I'm hoping that the Black Cat is a bit more interesting, and, uh, yeah, I think this is the first time this has on, been on Blu-ray, um, directed by Luigi Cosi responsible for Paganini Horror, as well as Contamination, the alien ripoff from Italy that's very entertaining. Uh, I'm hoping that this is something interesting and unique. Uh, it definitely looks interesting, especially when you take into consideration this is supposed to be adapted from The Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. On to the Christmas presents from my siblings. Uh, so... My sister asked me, like, what titles I wanted from Severin and Vinegar Syndrome, so she just kind of grabbed me some. Um, Malabima. I think that's how this is pronounced. I'm not going to try to pronounce it again. Um, don't know much about this one. I know this is, like, uh, a Italian, yeah, an Italian film directed by the director of Burial Ground, Night of Terror, which is definitely a good sign. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is like kind of a non-splication type movie. Let's, let's read the back here. Uh, Bima lives in a gothic castle with her family. However, after her family conducts a seance to communicate with her dead mother, she begins acting increasingly strange in uh, increasingly strange with her father at a loss at what to do he invites a beautiful nun to reside in the castle to try and help her help get her under control however the sister soon suspects that Bima has become possessed by an insatiable sex starved demon which will stop at nothing including murder to fulfill its depraved and unholy desires that actually sounds like a pretty interesting little late 70s exorcist type ripoff movie I can completely get down with that other one my sister bought for me from Vinegar is uh, Hollywood Horror House. Don't know much about this one. It just looked 
really interesting. Um, let's read the back, shall we? Vic Vance is an enigmatic young man who has manipulated his way into working at the decaying mansion of a once prolific, now reclusive and alcoholic movie star named Catherine Packard. While the rest of the house staff become suspicious of Vic's intentions, the aging movie queen finds him a companion she hopes a... wait, finds... it finds in him a companion and she hopes a lover, but as Vic begins behaving in more and more erratic ways, it becomes clear that he's far more sinister than his demeanor implies and might in fact be a vicious serial killer who has been murdering and dismembering middle-aged women in Hollywood. Uh, it's a psychedelic proto-slasher that was shot on and off between 1969 and 1973. Um, this sounds like it could be a good time. Uh, we'll definitely have to give that one a watch. I have a lot of watching to do. Uh, as far as stuff she got me from Severin, uh, she got me Killing of America, which... Is not a fun movie. Um, the Killing of America. This is like a. This is the first time that this film has ever been released um, in the U.S. And it's basically a really depressing, fucked up documentary about the history of violence in the U.S. Uh, there are interviews on here with, there's an interview on here with serial killer Edmund Kemper, who was, uh, who is, he's still alive actually, um, who was a absolute cruel, sadistic piece of shit, and he is the one who famously said, you know, when I see a beautiful woman, there, there are two things I immediately want to do. Uh, there, are there are two things immediately that I think about. I think about how I want to take her out on a date and treat her right. The other thing I think about doing is what her head would look like on a stick. Um, that is the famous quote used in American Psycho uh, that Patrick Bateman claims is from Ed Gein is actually from Edmund Kemper. And there's an absolutely chilling interview with him on this documentary. Um, super depressing violent, out there, nothing, like, completely all authentic footage from, from used from actual violent incidents are included in this film. Um, very, very not fun little documentary from the, uh, the early 80s. She also got me The Devil's Honey, which, this is a Lucio Fulci film that Severn put out, like, a few years back, um, in 2017, actually. And I do not know, um, goddamn. And the thing is, on the back here, uh, it doesn't even have a plot description. But, uh, I know this is a film that Fulci did in the 80s. It was thought to be lost for a while. And everybody that I've seen ter talk about this movie has said, like, this is one of Fulci's best movies. And it is also, like... Who was it that said it? I know somebody said during one of the Severn Cellar videos that, like, Lucio Fulci has become kind of like uh, Jimi Hendrix in the sense that he is uh, still, like, movies are still being released today that are lost pieces of his work, and they are just as good, if not better, than the stuff he released when he was alive. Uh, but, yeah... The Devil's Honey. I know there's a part where, like, a guy with a saxophone, like, plays it up against a woman's pussy in this movie. I know that that happens. And that's definitely got me interested. Uh, some stuff from my younger sister. <clears throat> Goddamn. She's bought me some movies off Amazon. Um, Super Hell. Jimmy Walker. The Johnny... Yeah, Johnny Walker collection. This is, like... A collection of, I guess, director Johnny Walker's uh, works. I have no idea what this is. It just looks very, very interesting and um, sounds interesting. Let's read the back. Welcome to a demented realm. Welcome to the demented realm of Super Hell. Johnny Walker brings us an array of vast and twist, 
and twisted horrors in this latest sleazeball collection. Killer clowns, transvestites, rednecks, and metal music. Welcome to the party. Um, let's see. Yeah, no, this definitely seems like... Um, Naked chicks, freaky chicks, violence, gallons of gore, buckets of blood, and zombies. Uh, this is... This, this definitely sounds like a wild ride of low-budget filmmaking, and I'm completely for it. Uh, Bleeding Lady, directed by Ryan Nicholson. I don't know much about this. It's directed by Ryan Nicholson. Uh, rest in peace. He has been dead for a year now, and I can't fucking believe that. Um, but Ryan Nicholson, interesting director, very good effects artist. Uh, never actually seen this one from him. Uh, it's been on my list of, like stuff to buy forever um, so I guess I can watch it now uh, Hereditary do I need to say anything about fucking Hereditary do do I really need to say anything about it it's a fucking classic and you know what just for you guys I'm gonna like actually move this forward I'm gonna give you guys the digital copy I think that's enough time. Um, might not be valid after 2020. Uh, but yeah. There it is. And now it is gone forever. Whoever watches this video first and is like, Hey, I want a digital copy of Hereditary. Well, lucky for you, what? you got it. Uh, Hereditary. I'm gonna fucking pick up these bits of trash before they fucking blow everywhere. Uh, this, my younger sister got me, um, as well as uh, a comic book. Uh, it's a triple feature DVD of Blood Gnome, Satan's Little Helper, and Spliced. Now, I don't, I've never seen Spliced. However, Blood Gnome is absolutely amazing. It is a really awful, um, like, ghoulies-ish type movie. Uh, with little blood gnome monsters um, that can only be seen through like a night vision filter of a camera, and they're connected to S and M sex murders for some reason. I could not explain to you why. Satan's Little Helper, really great dark comedy film about a kid who inadvertently um, helps a serial killer kill people on Halloween night. Um, this is a nice little set. Uh, you got the flipper disc for Blood Gnome and Spliced, but you got a single disc for Satan's Little Helper, so that's cool. I hope Satan's Little Helper eventually gets a Blu-ray release. I told, um, I, I told the director, uh, who, uh, whose name is not on the back, and I, Jeff Lieberman, I told him when I met him at a convention, like, you have to get Satan's Little Helper on Blu-ray eventually, man, you have to, it's great. Um, my sister also got me this. It's Creep Show, the official comic book adaptation. Very, very nice. I look forward to reading that. Creep Show is not just one of the best horror anthologies, but, you know, just a great uh, film in general. Uh, really like it. And the artwork is very, very nice. I, I really, very much enjoy the artwork. Um, to this one. Love it. Love Creep Show. And my cousin got me this. You can tell my some of my siblings are um, a bit bigger on Christmas than others. I did. They also gave me gift cards, so don't uh, don't go trying to contact them with hate mail. Uh, got me. My cousin got me this, which is. Bedtime for Democracy by the Dead Kennedys, their final studio album. Now all I need is their first album, and I will literally own all of their albums. Uh, the Dead Kennedys was a consistently good uh, punk rock band. This is the only album from them that I would say is, is, is less than great. This is a very solid album. There's some great tracks on here. Tracks like Anarchy for Sale, Chicken Shit Conformist... Uh, Rambozo the Clown, uh, 
Macho and security. Uh, I think that's like it for songs um, that I actually, you know, genuinely really like on this album. Uh, it's still, it's a very, very good album. Um, very like it's 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 a solid album. It's a decent album. Um, this is no fresh fruit for rotting vegetables. This is no uh, you know plastic surgery disasters. This is no Franken Christ. This isn't even the compilation album. Give me convenience or give me death. This is an extremely middle of the road album. However, I do still quite like it. And I also like the, I like the artwork on the album, and the artwork on the little paper slip, which I won't focus on too, too much, but uh, it's, it, it says here, The Viet Vietnam Never Happened, an adventure park for the whole family. Thrill to, to Buddhist priests who set themselves on fire at noon. Take a real Huey helicopter ride and try your hand at... Staffing, okay, I, I don't know what that fucking says. Oh, here we go. Here's a great one. The kids will love our petting zoo, where you can feed McDonald's cookies to a corral of children deformed by Agent Orange. Our peace with honor roller coaster will destroy you in order to save you. That, and that's just the first, that's just the front of this slip. There's a bunch of other very dark jokes about fucking the Vietnam War um, and everything on the other side. Uh, but that is it for my uh, Black Friday haul as well as just a few other random things. Actually, actually, I am completely forgetting two things in particular. Um... Yeah, bought this for myself uh, like a month ago, uh, which is Return of the Living Dead Part 2 on Blu-ray, uh, the Screen Factory Blu-ray. Great to finally have this one. I've always, always really liked this movie. Um, Rewatching it, didn't like it as much on the most recent rewatch, but uh, as much as I did the first time, but still very, very fun stuff. Uh, other thing is way up here, I gotta fucking like, is the Marx Brothers Silver Screen Collection, which is um, five Marx Brothers films uh, on Blu-ray, consisting of The Coconuts, Animal Crackers, Monkey Business, Horse Feathers, and Duck Soup. I've seen Horse Feathers and Duck Soup. Uh, that's about it, and that's really all I have to say. The Marx Brothers are classic, and yeah, uh, I think that that's obvious by now. Really like the Marx Brothers. This was a cheap set, only like 15 bucks. Could not say no to that, but that's actually, that is 100% it. I'm done. Anyway, guys, this is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews signing off. Peace.